So in the last video, we talked about trying to establish regular testing between several participants at a scientific virtual organization. To do this, we need to install some software and, and configure some measurement hosts. But the first step that we need to do is, is think carefully about the measurement configuration that we're going to perform uh, to accomplish the goal of, of establishing a dashboard between all the participants. So we're going to be looking into creating this configuration file that each of the hosts is going to consume uh, when it's performing its test, but it's also going to drive what our dashboard application looks like. So we need to establish three main things when making this configuration file. We have to identify the hosts that are participating in this. This is normally done by communicating with each of the sites and learning what the names of their persona hosts are. Uh, forming this into a configuration file uh, using some uh, markup language. Then we need to decide which tests we're going to run between each of these. Typical tests that we want to run are bandwidth tests using a tool like BWCTL or a latency or packet loss measurement that we would get from a tool like OAMP. After we've uh, established the, the tests themselves and who we're going to be testing against, we glue these together within the configuration file language so that we can establish what the dashboard is going to look like and we can start the tests uh, on each of these individual hosts. So we're going to step through the process of creating this configuration file right now. It consists of five main stanzas. The top stanza is just some administrative information so that we know who is operating this mesh. We then go through and look at the individual hosts that are a part of uh, the measurement process, the specifications of the tests, and then we glue these two items together through the definition of groups and through tests. So we're going to create this configuration file right now using some markup that I've previously saved. At the top of our configuration file here, we want to first establish the name of the, the test that we're going to, or the name of the mesh that we're going to be using, and then the person who operates this mesh. It's possible to use multiple uh, numbers of this administrator block right here, which consists of a name and the person's email address. We're just going to leave it as example mesh for, the, for this uh, exercise. After we've established uh, what the, the, the header portion of this mesh config file looks like, we're going to start entering in the different organizations that are participating in the process. We hope to establish some tests between five different organizations. And this is done by including another block inside of this file that looks a little like this. Inside of this block, we have a couple of different stanzas. First, we identify who the organization is. Uh, in this case, it's the example company. This example company may have multiple sites that are associated with it. Perhaps they have an office on one side of the country and an office on the other side of the country. We use a site indicator to, uh, to describe where they're physically located. We can include a description field in here as well. At each site, there may be multiple hosts. Perhaps they have one host for running latency tests, and perhaps they have another for bandwidth tests. In this case, we're just using a single host block. Inside of the host block, we have a couple of other fields. We have a description where we can give it a name. Perhaps we just want to call it the bandwidth host or the latency host. We also specify what the addresses are. We can do this in the form of a host name. We can do this in the form of an IPv4 address. We can perhaps even do this in the form of an IPv6 address. This next field is used if the host is not running an agent to do the actual tests. In this case, we are running an agent, so we're just going to insert a comment in front of this so it's not interpreted. The last three stanzas are related to the measurements themselves. We intend to run three different types of measurements within our mesh here, and we're going to specify these in terms of these measurement archive stanzas. The first is for the OAMP tool, the second is for the BWCTL tool, and the third is for the traceroute tool. We have a read and a write URL, which maps back to the Esmond instance on each of the persona nodes. You'll notice that these look the same for each of these because it's the same archive in this case for each of these, uh, for each of these functions on this host. Each of the stanzas is going to look like this. It'll just be different for whichever domain happens to be running that specific test. So to create this mesh file, I'm going to copy and paste in four more examples so that we have a more complete looking mesh. These are all essentially the same, except they have a different domain name for each of these. Now we need to specify the different tests that we're running. We've already said that we're interested in running a traceroute, an OAMP, and a BWCTL test. So we've already specified these in the form of test blocks. I'm going to paste these in right now, and then we'll walk through each of them. For the BWCTL block, there's a couple of different fields that we can enumerate. 
first we have a type. We map this back to person or persona buoy BWCTL. This is what we used above in our measurement archive specification. We also can specify a tool. In this case, we can use iPerf. Perhaps we wanted to use iPerf 3 instead, the newer version of this product. We're going to be using a TCP test instead of UDP, and this will allow the measurement traffic to back off in the case that there's other traffic occurring on the network at, one, at any given point in time. We're going to run this test every six hours, and to specify that, we need to enumerate in seconds the time between the tests. If we do uh, a t this calculated out means six hours in seconds. It's 21,600. The tests themselves are going to run only for 20 seconds. And we're going to set this flag here as well, force bidirectional. This forces us to run a test source to destination and destination to source. We also need to have a randomized start percentage. This means that the test will not run on an exact interval of six hours, but it could run up to 25% before or after. This helps us space out the tests over the course of the day. The OAMP test is similar in that it has other fields that we need to fill in here. Uh, we can specify the interval between when packets are being sent. For example, 10 packets per second is specified as 0.1. If we were going to send 100 packets per second, we would do, use 0 0.01. We have a threshold here uh, in terms of if we, how long we will wait for a packet to be marked as lost. In this case, we're going to wait 10 seconds. If we do not receive a response, we mark that as being a lost packet. These session counts and sample counts are related to how often the test is summarized. We can split this into um, 30 seconds or a minute or even a half hour. We're constantly running OAMP tests in the form of a stream, so we need to summarize them every now and then so the results can propagate back to the dashboard. The last couple of options aren't normally changed. The packet padding is how large the packet is going to be. In this case, we're just allowing it to be the default size of 50. We don't add any additional packet padding on top of that. The granularity of our measurements goes down into the, mil the, the millionth uh, field right here. And lastly, we have the force bidirectional to make sure that we're running forward and backward tests. Trace route looks similar. We're going to be running a test every 10 minutes. We're going to use the UDP protocol instead of ICMP. We're going to wait up to 30 seconds for results before we consider those to be lost. We're not going to pause between trace route tests. This allows us to parallelize the operation. And then the last couple of options are normally better as defaults. We're going to wait five seconds for a result before we assume that it's a lost. We're going to always start at the first TTL. We're going to go no more than 64 TTLs, and our packet size is 40 bytes. So we've established two things, who we're testing with and what the tests are going to be looking like. The last two items that we need to specify glue these two things together. A group is a specification of the hosts that are involved in a specific test. So if we wanted to do a full mesh, for example, if we wanted hosts uh, 0, 1, 2, or 2 and 3 to participate in a full mesh of tests, meaning each host tests to all the other hosts, we have a group that's defined like this. We have the members, and then we have the type equals mesh. This will allow us to configure a full mesh. The alternative is to test in what's called a disjoint fashion. For example, if we had these three hosts involved in the tests, we can launch tests from our first one, which is specified as the B member, to these other two hosts, example four and example five. They don't need to be running the agent. They can just be off on their own acting as a beacon and host A does all the or host host does all the work as because it's defined to be the B member. Now we have our groups, we have our tests and our hosts. We need to finally glue these together in the form of two tests. We're going to do a full mesh of throughput testing, which we will use the specification right here. We will call it by its name. And we were going to use the full mesh group, which is defined to be right here. And we're also going to do a disjoint mesh using the same exact test specification, but using this grouping of hosts. Now that we've established all the different configuration options, we can save this. And now we can use it when we define our dashboard application and when we set up our measurement hosts.